if the only option I have uh, is to vote for uh, some of those tax uh, reductions, uh, I'll vote for him. That is would-be Speaker John Boehner seeming to endorse President Obama's approach to taxes, probably not to make any friends among Democrats, though. Uh, or even some of his own Republican allies. All right, Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Washington Post Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Amy Walter. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics, everything you need to know. It's twitter.com slash rickkline, twitter.com slash Amy E. Walter. Amy, kick us off this new week. Big day coming up tomorrow. Too. We have big primaries on the docket, but we're going to start with this, my first top line, the party of yes. As we saw in our first clip here, uh, speaker in waiting, John Boehner, minority leader, takes a stand, but this time saying that he could potentially compromise with Democrats on the tax cuts. The real question, of course, Rick, is what does Senator McConnell think about all of this, who's been very vigilant in his uh, support for extending all of the tax cuts. And for that matter, what does Senator Reid think of this? Because the, the big battle is going to be among Democrats in the That's Senate. Right. The, what, what, what John Boehner said yesterday, though, takes an argument away from Democrats. They can't just blame Republicans for not passing the tax cuts. Now they're, you're the Republican leader in the House saying, let's do it right now. So an interesting, an interesting move that scrambles the politics around a big issue that's, that's right. coming up all through the fall. Next up, Blue Hen Tea. The big race tomorrow that everyone's watching is in, in tiny Delaware, where the, the Tea Party favorite, Christine O'Donnell, has got a late surge. She's now got the backing of Sarah Palin and Jim DeMint, and she has got a strong challenge to Mike Castle in a race that, if she wins, I think everyone basically will tell you that uh, Republican chances are vastly diminished in picking up a seat in that state. It is a, a, a fascinating. We're seeing that the, the primary season kind of end how, how it started with all these Tea Party challenges. Well, that's right, and that it happened so late in the game. And we had been talking about this before, but the real issue in, in our minds is the fact that Jim DeMint decided to jump in here wow. and some of these other places where the primary winner was probably assured to win the general election or it didn't change the calculation that much. This, as you pointed out, would be a very big deal and put this potentially back in Democratic hands. All right, let's move now <clears throat> to California. We're talking about brownout. Uh, as we know, uh, former President Bill Clinton and Gubernatorial candidate Jerry Brown don't like each other that much. They were uh, opponents in the 1992 presidential Democratic nomination fight. Meg Whitman has used some of Bill Clinton's words against um, Jerry Brown, and now Jerry Brown is fighting back. Look what he said on the trail t the other day. I mean, Clinton's a nice guy, but whoever said he always told the truth? <laughs> wow, this is not going to be fun. No, it isn't, but it's so funny because Bill Clinton can play everywhere in the country. He's not going to be playing in California, I think it's fair to say. There's no love lost there, yep. clearly, and, and Jerry Brown doesn't like seeing that those old clips of this 20-year-old battle being used against him, so he lashes out a little bit right. there. But he knew it was coming. So. That's right, you right. had to. And, and last up today, going colonial. The former House Speaker Newt Gingrich is out with some downright strange comments about President Obama. Check this out, what he said to National Review. Uh, he said, what if Obama is so outside our comprehension that only if you understand Kenyan anti-colonial behavior can you begin to piece together his actions. Uh, fortunately, we have an expert with us on Kenyan anti-colonial behavior, right, Amy? So we know exactly what Newt Gingrich is referring to. Th that's right. Right. I couldn't we'll get remember back to when that was. We'll get All back right, to you yes. on that one. We begin, begin today with uh, the hot state of New Hampshire, where big primary is face, uh, facing down tomorrow on the Republican side. We are joined by the Democratic candidate in the race up for the Senate up there. Congressman Paul Hodes joins us from WMUR, our affiliate in Manchester. And, and Congressman, I want to start with, who, who do you hope is going to win tomorrow? Who would you most like to see uh, face off against you on the ballot in the fall? Well, you know, whoever wins uh, tomorrow, they share an extreme far-right radical agenda. Uh, so it really doesn't matter that much. They want to overturn Roe v. Wade and take away a woman's right to choose. They want tax cuts for the wealthiest that are going to cost us $700 billion bad to the deficit. They want to keep shipping our jobs overseas with tax breaks for companies that do that. And they all deny that global warming even exists in the face of the hottest summer that we've all suffered through. So whoever it is, there's going to be a clear choice in this race between someone like me who wants to bring jobs back, make Made in America mean something again, and rebuild the middle class on a firm foundation and extreme far-right radical um, extremists who just have uh, want to take us screaming back to what got us into this mess in the first place. Uh, though, Congressman, if you look at the polls and listen to the Republicans, uh, they'll tell you that, that they think Ayotte is the better and stronger candidate against you in the fall. So 
Isn't it m more likely that you'd rather face someone like Ovid than, than a Kelly Ayotte? Well, both Ovid LaMontagne, who's now been endorsed by Jim DeMint, and Kelly Ayotte, who has gotten the endorsement and backing of Sarah Palin, the mama grizzly, uh, share a radical right-wing extreme agenda that's just not in sync with New Hampshire. Uh, so really, when you look at their policies, there's not a lot of difference. And it's not pol that's not a policy position that the independent voters of New Hampshire, who care about fiscal responsibility, integrity, and independence, um, are really going to cotton up to. Um, I have been talking about jobs, small business, uh, and making sure that we have tax help for uh, making Made in America mean something again. And that's what uh, independent voters in New Hampshire really care about. Congressman, I caught a little bit of your latest ad, and you, you, you liken Washington to a hot dog eating contest. Uh, I, think in the, I think it's a pork reference. I'm assuming those are pork hot dogs. They aren't kosher. Uh, but, but I want to ask you, uh, you, have, you have been among the more aggressive defenders of what the Democrats in Congress have been doing. Are you going to be out there talking up the health care law, for instance, financial reform, for instance, and saying, look, these are things that we did that we are proud to run on. Uh, I think there has been a lot accomplished, but clearly there's a lot more that needs to be done. Uh, we're in a very tough recovery. It's a slow recovery, uh, and a lot of people have lost jobs and lost their houses. So we need to walk and chew gum at the same time. We need to cut wasteful government spending. There's no doubt about it, because we've got a long-term deficit crisis. At the same time, we've got to continue doing what we're doing uh, to rebuild the middle class on a firm foundation. And that means uh, government making sure that business can hire again and putting in place the policies that rebuild the middle class and bring back jobs to this country. It's why I've been pushing my party on deficits, because fiscal responsibility is necessary. We can cut wasteful spending, shift our priorities, and grow the economy on a firm foundation. And that means making the kind of investments uh, that are necessary in infrastructure and smart grid, broadband, a clean energy economy that brings jobs, improves our national security, and deals with the climate crisis that will cost us all more than we can calculate. Well, let's talk about that for, for one minute. Obviously, the battle going on right now between the White House and Minority Leader uh, John Boehner on taxes. Why don't you weigh in here? The vote comes before you that has, let's say, a compromise to extend all of the Bush tax cuts. Is that something that you could support? What I think is really important to focus on is this, that the tax cuts for the top 2% of this country would hit our deficit with $700 billion, drive us $700 billion deeper into the black hole that the George Bush and Republican policies created. We can't afford to give tax breaks to the wealthiest Americans when it's the middle class and small business who need tax help. That's absolutely clear. And it's reckless fiscal irresponsibility to want to extend uh, the tax breaks for the top 2% in this country when the top 1% of this country are already earning 25% of all the income in the country. It's time to get serious about deficits. And what I get from the other side, frankly, is hypocrisy and reckless fiscal irresponsibility. It's time that we stop tax breaks for people who um, are in the very top bracket. So you vote it's against fiscally irresponsible you, to do it. You vote against anything that extends those tax cuts then for the top 2%. Well, we'll see, what, we'll see what comes to the floor. We'll see how this shakes out. I know there's a lot of talk going on now, but uh, my opponents in this race have, are clear in their positions. They want to extend tax breaks for the top 2% of Americans. It'll hit our deficit with $700 billion. That's reckless. It's fiscally irresponsible. And they can't claim the mantle of fiscal responsibility and right. vote to extend tax breaks for the top 2%. All right, Congressman Paul Hodes, <laughs> we'd wish you luck in the primary, but I think you'll be okay tomorrow. Well, good luck in the fall as well. I'm okay tomorrow. Right. Thanks Thank so much. See you again.